And let's go back to Warren for a stock market update from the Ayala trading floor. Warren, go ahead. Thank you, Pinky. The PSEI is at a new record high. It's at 5,198.49. That's up 8 tenths of a percent or 41 points from yesterday's close. Again, again yesterday was a record high as well. Um, we were rising on uh, expectations of higher first quarter earnings and growth. Um, and today, the, the, the numbers are actually bolstered by gains overnight on Wall Street. The Dow Jones rose about 190 points thanks to that successful bond auction by Spain. Everybody was worried that Spain might be the next Greece and it might might have had to be bailed out financially, but the bond auction yesterday by Spain, the successful bond auction, showed everybody that Spain is still in pretty good shape. Um, again, the PSEI new record high, it's now at 5,201. That's the first time it's ever crossed the 5,200 mark. Um, it's being led right now by property, uh, property uh, issues, property sector looking pretty good right now. Now it's time for our company call. And incidentally, we are joined by the Century Properties Group, and we are joined by not one, but two of the Antonio brothers. Um, beside me here is Carlo Antonio, the CFO of the company. Good morning, sir. And uh, over here is Marco Antonio, the managing, managing Director and COO of Century Properties Group. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, you guys had a stellar 2011 year. Your net yes. income up nearly five-fold. Tell us yes. what drove that growth. Yes, our income last year was $865 million off a revenue base of $4.7 billion. And most of that growth came from our built-up projects that have been completed or partially completed, including Gramercy, Nice Bridge, and Cadden Ranch. We also did pre-sales of $18.4 billion last year. And one thing of note of Century is that we're extremely strong in the international market. We did 67% international last year, or over $12 billion to the OFW and foreign market in wow. terms of pre-sales. Well, does it, does it have concern you that there are challenges presented in the foreign market? Um, the Euro Europe is not in good shape. The U.S. is only getting back on its feet. Um, now that you, you mentioned 67% of the international yes. market, um, are you concerned? Well, actually, uh, thank you for asking that question. Uh, we have a very diversified uh, distribution network, and actually we're industry leading in terms of international sales. Uh, what we've had since 2011 was we're now selling in 50 countries, so, um, so this is diversified in nature. So if one country per se were to experience some um, sort of economic sort of uh, negative headwinds, we're more than ample to shift gears and focus on stronger markets. Uh, this year for 2012, we will continue to tap new markets. Uh, we continue to open markets in uh, Europe as well as the Middle East. So we have a very balanced portfolio uh, anchored by strong Philippine sales, uh, currently one third of our total sales. But we also have very strong Asia x Philippines. We also have Middle East, North America as well as Europe. Okay, well, the problem with having a great year is topping it the next yes. year. Tell us about your projections. Um, you, you expect a net income yes. this year of $1.7 billion? We're targeting at least a 100% increase. So that would be $1.7 and above. And we have near-term visibility on that since we have $25 billion of on-book revenues. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do to book such revenue is to actually spend. And aside from the audited numbers, our pre-sales for the first quarter is tracking. We're targeting a 20 billion pre-sales number for 2012, and we've done 5.3 billion for the first three months of 2012. Well, tell us a little bit about your land banking. Sure. Uh, what projects are, have, do you have lined up for this year? Yes. Last year was a transformational year for Century. We acquired three parcels totaling 2 million square meters, two of which will be in Quezon City, and one which is in Batangas. The two Quezon City projects will target the affordable market while the Batangas property will target the tourism and retirement market. All right, that's interesting because you guys are, are actually very well known for being yes. high-end. And now yes. you're saying you're opening up a project that is affordable. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Why do, you, why, do you, why do you want to expand there? We've been known to be more catering to the luxury market in the past, but as of late, we have diversified. Last year, 20% of our sales was from the luxury, which would define us over 7 million. 50% was from the middle income, which we define as 3.5 to 7 million. And roughly 30% was from the affordable market, which we define as 1.2 to 3.5 million. From that, our average selling price is actually 3.5 million. So we do our, we are known for these um, high-profile projects. On a revenue base, though, it's diversified. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to add that essentially we are very market-oriented and very opportunistic. Um, so we will maintain a leading and strong foothold on the luxury segment. Uh, but as Carlo mentioned, we are now uh, 
expanding uh, aggressively in terms of both the middle income and the affordable segments. In terms of the demand drivers, the luxury segment uh, is currently targeting high net worth uh, families and individuals. Uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs right now doing very well in the country. But we have now, I think more than any other developer, began to tap the non-Filipino foreign market, um, attracted by the key brands that we now collaborate with, be they uh, Trump Organization with Trump Tower Manila, mm -hmm. Versace Home with Milano. We also have Paris Hilton yeah. uh, for the Azor Urban Resort Residences. And most lately, um, the Masoni Home brand for Aqua Livingstone, um, located in Pasig. For the middle income market, uh, we are um, uh, targeting the overseas foreign workers who are now uh, over 10% of our population. So over 12 million people are now remitting uh, over $20 billion annually and continues to grow. Uh, there are very, very low penetration rates internationally. So uh, combined with opening up of new markets, uh, this presents a strong uh, trajectory moving forward. And then finally, for the affordable segments, um, by virtue of its affordability, uh, we're now opening up first time uh, homeowner market. Um, the Philippines is actually marked by a perfect uh, trifecta of positive reasons. First, we have actually a very young population. Uh, close to 45% of our population is below 20. Um, second, we have one of the lowest home ownership rates uh, in the Southeast Asia. Uh, Philippines right now has 60% home ownership rates versus 70% in Indonesia or 80% in Thailand. And last but not the least is basically a very liquid banking sector um, offering long-term financing to first-time home buyers. So a lot of people are now coming into the market, you know, able to buy their first or their dream home. So these are three markets that we are we are tapping. Yeah, the low interest rate environment is actually a big reason why the property sector is up over 20% here at the PSC yes. so far this year. But let's talk about competition. You're entering into the middle middle uh, income tar uh, range, the affordable range. There are a lot of players in that sector, all of them, and big ones at that. How do you feel about competing against the the uh, SMs and the Ayalas? Well, we've been around for uh, over two and a half decades. Uh, we're actually a uh, 26-year-old company, and we've been able to grow from a private uh, property developer into now uh, a public corporation. Uh, we had just gone public uh, late last year. Uh, we feel very confident um, since um, the market right now, yes, is marked by a lot of, um, I guess, build build up of inventory. Uh, but one good thing um, that's going for Century Properties is we continue to push and differentiate our product strategy and our distribution strategy. Um, as you will note, um, a lot of our um, of our projects are actually game changing in the industry. We have the Azure with the first man-made beach concept, which has been uh, extremely uh, accepted by the market. We also are the only developers that have partnered with these global brands. And so we have a uh, brand portfolio that I think can, is not matched by anyone in the industry. Um, by virtue of these brands, it's actually attracting multiple segments, um, starting from the non-Filipino foreign uh, foreigners. Uh, for example, Trump Tower Manila, which was just launched September of last year, currently has a 60% uh, uh, take-up rate in a matter of a few months. 30% uh, uh, of our sales are coming from uh, the foreign market. Um, so they're very comfortable with these brands. They know that with the brand um, is associated uh, the requisite quality. And we're actually very proud to bring these brands in and to uplift the overall quality standards. Wow. I want to go back to your sure. listing here at the PSC. Yes. Um, let's talk about your 10% uh, public float. Uh, sure. how, how, are, how are you doing in complying with that? We recently concluded two transactions for Barry this year. We sold new shares to investors and we converted a prior debt into equity from one of our main institutional shareholders. Currently, our public float is 27% thus more than meeting the 10% minimum float. All right, so that's yes. good, so you're good there. Now, I want to go back to that to that thing about, well, you mentioned earlier that you, you are known for bringing in like, well-known people and well-known brands to, bo to bolster your sales. How big is the impact, actually? Have, have you had a, a chance to measure the impact of those people coming in or those brands coming in? I think the impact is tremendous. Um, first of all, it uh, creates uh, extreme brand awareness. Um, you know, uh, since we were actually operating as a private company, uh, we have now become uh, more of a, we'd like to say, a household name in the industry. Uh, we've also uh, seen the impact in terms of our pre-sales. Uh, just this year, uh, we've actually reached uh, quarter one pre-sales of around 5.2 billion, well on track for our 20 billion target uh, for 2011. Uh, furthermore, it actually um, 
gives a lot of confidence to the buyers um, that they are actually uh, made aware that the, uh, the product offering of Century Properties is actually at a higher level. So as the market continues to become commoditized, um, you know, there are actually many projects out there that it's actually very hard to tell one project from the other. Uh, we believe that every Century project is memorable, uh, exciting, and ultimately will deliver good value for money for the, for, for the buyer. Okay, so we're going to have to leave it at that. Thank you very much Thank for your time this much. morning. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Thank you so much.